interview. I'm really excited about it because I have the opportunity to uh, interview my really good friend, Miriam Barrio. And we've been friends since freshman year of high school. And what I love about Miriam is that she's just such a genuine individual and we share a lot of the same passions. And she actually was the first individual that just kind of pulled me in to using doTERRA essential oils. Prior to that, I was using uh, inferior quality essential oils. <laughs> but uh, Miriam so graciously let me know, girl, no, that's not it. <laughs> and I am so grateful. I have not looked back. So today we're just going to discuss some things pertaining to essential oils and pregnancy, delivery, postpartum, working out, allergies, and all of that. So I am going to stop talking and now and just allow Miriam to just give us a brief introduction of herself. Awesome. Well, like you've already said, my name is Miriam Barrio and Anika is my longtime friend. Um, I uh, have always um, loved holistic, a holistic way of being. Um, my parents introduced it to me as a very young child. And um, it's always been kind of like in the back of my mind. Um, as I got older and uh, became, you know, to have children and things like that, it, it became more like important for me to find out what those things were that my parents used to use for me. And so um, I began to like search and ask, and what was that leaf, <laughs> you know, that she used to boil? Um, and I came into um, essential oils and I haven't looked back. And so when I began using essential oils, I was actually pregnant uh, with my fourth child. And um, I shouldn't say, I had been using essential oils a little bit before that. Of course, the inferior essential oils that you buy at the health food store or any other store that you find. Um, and what really triggered me to search out better essential oils is that I would get peppermint because I was trying to make toothpaste and I would use the peppermint. But then on the back of the peppermint, it said, do not ingest. And I'd be like, what in the world? If I can't ingest it and I'm making toothpaste, am I, is it toxic? Like those were the questions that were in my head. And so a cousin of mine, she had started using essential oils and I was pregnant with my, our fourth child. And I had the opportunity to use them during my pregnancy, but more importantly, um, because I wasn't like 100% completely sold by that time, but I used it during my labor and delivery. And that was the, the best labor and delivery that I had, I had experienced um, because I was able to use the oils. And, um, and I haven't looked back since. I've used them for my children, on my children, on myself. And um, even my husband is interested sometimes. <laughs> He's like, what's that oil? You know, so yeah. it's been um, a really great way for our family to be. Okay, so let's um, backtrack a little bit. You mentioned that you used it in your pregnancy. Can you share, and you know, let me just throw this out there as a disclaimer. This is obviously not medical advice, and we do recommend that you see your doctor um, before you proceed with anything that is here. So we're just sharing our opinions, and again, this is not medical advice. So can you share with us, Miriam, um, some of the oils that you used while pregnant with your fourth child? Sure. Um, I... Uh... I used lavender a lot for calming and for helping me to sleep at night. Um, that's what I used during pregnancy because I wasn't really like um, sold. I wasn't super familiar. Um, and, um, but it wasn't uh, until the labor and delivery, I used clary sage on the inside of my ankles and I used frankincense. Um, clary sage is an oil that you do not want to use too early um, because it can, it can actually induce and help to induce labor. So uh, there are still things that 
um, especially when you're pregnant, you don't want to just use every single oil that you have. You want to make sure that you do your due do, 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 do diligence to um, figure out and find out what those oils you know, can do and, and why you shouldn't use them. So clary sage is one of those oils you don't want to use um, before your 40 weeks, right? And if they're talking about inducing you, maybe you can start using it on your 38th, 39th week um, on the inside of your ankles. Cause it's not like you put it on and all of a sudden you're going, going to go into labor, right? Mm -hmm. So um, my induction had been started, but I actually started to, um, uh, what is it called? Contract. I started mm -hmm. contracting on my own. And so that was, um, really eye opening for me because it was like an hour of Pitocin and then they took me off of it. Um, so I used the Clary Sage on the inside of my ankles during labor and delivery and frankincense really took me to, um, a place of very calm. So where did you apply? So you said you used the Clary Sage on your ankle and was this like a one-time application and, and you were no. done or was it just repeatedly? It was repeatedly throughout the laboring process, the beginning of my labor. Um, you know, when you're in labor, you go through so many different phases, right? If you mm -hmm. can remember, like you start <laughs> doing and feeling great. I like not to remember labor. <laughs> But amen. I like the finished product, but <laughs> labor. So, okay, go ahead. <laughs> so, um, you know, you have so many stages. So there was, so I used the clear set on the inside of my ankles and then the frankincense, I just put a couple dabs in a face towel and I held it over my nose and I would just breathe it when I felt it was like weakening, you know, after a few hours, I would do it again. And I just take it, you know, and everybody that all the nurses, they were like, oh my gosh, it smells so amazing in here. What are you using? You know, um, but I would just put the frankincense over my nose. And then when I got to, I'm ready to get this baby done. I was like, I can't smell it anymore. You know? Mm -hmm. So you have to definitely like, you don't do something past what your body wants you to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now in terms of the Clary Sage, I'm assuming that you had it like in a roller bottle. Did you mix it with a carrier oil or was it just straight from? So I didn't have it in a roller bottle. I was so new. I just yeah. had it in one of these and I'd put a drop on the inside of my ankles. It was meat. It was no carrier oil. It was all, I was just all in. I didn't, I didn't know, you know, how to do all of that. I'm not, and I'm not just geared towards, you know, doing all of that. So I did use it neat, um, but you can definitely have a roller bottle. It makes it way easier. Um, mm -hmm. And when you have a carrier oil in your essential oil, it actually helps to drive the oil deeper into the cell. Mm -hmm. So um, the carrier oil uh, is going to help too, right? It's not like diluting it so it doesn't affect you. It's, it's going to help the oil to get deeper into the cell. On top of that, clary sage is not a hot oil. like um, Meaning? Some, meaning like, um, I don't know if you've ever gotten oregano on the top of your skin and it's hot. Like it feels like almost like it's burning. Um, mm -hmm. Peppermint sometimes can have that effect. Uh, although it feels cool and hot, you know, warm. Um, so clary sage does not have that effect. So putting it neat on your body is not going to, hurt. It's not going to feel uncomfortable. Got you. So when you say putting it neat on your body, you're meaning without mixing it with a carrier oil and just putting it in its raw state on your body. Yeah. It wouldn't necessarily yeah. impact mm -hmm. you. Okay. All right. Um, makes sense. I want to back up a little bit because I have heard a lot of controversy surrounding lavender essential oils. And I know that this was a question that I came and I asked you directly because I know they said, you know what, it can disrupt your hormones and just create like a lot of issues. Can you speak to that as it sure. pertains to the specific brand of essential oils that you use? Sure. So um, there's a derivative of lavender. Gosh, I, now that we're talking about it, I can't remember what it's called, but there's a derivative of lavender. Um, 
I don't have one. I don't, it's in my room. Um, that many times other companies use it to stretch the lavender, right? So they use it to stretch the lavender. I want to say it's lavender. And if I'm, if I'm incorrect, you know, forgive me. Um, but I think it's lavender that, that is the derivative of lavender that does mess up with your hormones. And so um, people have been, you know, told that, they, you know, men can grow breasts and, you know, there's just too much um, extra hormones for women. Um, but, but doTERRA does not have that derivative of lavender and it is in its pure state. Um, doTERRA essential oils are 100% pure lavender, 100% pure peppermint. You can um, ingest the peppermint. There's no sign on the bottles that says you can't drink it. Uh, there's lots of controversy about drinking essential oils because they are 50 to 70 times uh, more powerful than herbs. So you don't want to drink like 15 drops um, unless you have a serious thing happening that, you know, you are working with an aromatherapist or whatever to, you know, help that, but you can drink a drop. Um, but I always lead with do what you feel comfortable with mm -hmm. because you don't have to drink it. You can mm -hmm. rub it on the bottoms of your feet. You can put it on your spine. You can put it in a roller bottle. If you don't feel comfortable drinking an essential oil, then don't drink it. You don't mm -hmm. have to, you know, mm -hmm. Um, because mm -hmm. there's so many other ways to get it in. Because mm -hmm. I know a, of a lot of people that have used essential oils um, during a time of, of high toxicity in their body, and they've helped to um, turn their bodies around and help mm -hmm. to support their bodies without drinking them. So okay. rub them on the bottoms of your feet. And the reason why you use the bottoms of your feet is because your pores are more open and mm -hmm. your spine, same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, your pores are more open. So the, the um, oil gets in uh, within, you know, 30 to 60 seconds right to the cell. Okay. So um, let me just make sure I hear what you're saying. In terms of the lavender and the controversy surrounding it, it's not the same rule you're saying for every single essential oil company. It depends on what brand you're getting it because sometimes they're putting things in there, kind of like the fillers, if you will, to yes. help to stretch it. And you're saying this, this specific brand, doTERRA of essential oils, and I'm sure there are probably others out there that don't necessarily add that and they keep the oil in its purest form. So it should not be an issue. Yep. Okay. Okay. And then obviously with the drink in it to proceed <laughs> with caution and what you're comfortable with. Okay. Um, you mentioned also the application and mm -hmm. I know you said, you know, the best places to put it. Can you just repeat that again? Um, sure. When you're applying it. Say again. What you said you mentioned the best places to apply the essential oils because I think that's something that sometimes people miss. You know, they just kind of put it randomly anywhere in the body, but you're saying that there are places, specific places on your body that's best um, for you to put the essential oils. Yes. So it really depends um, on a lot of things, but um, I have a little book and I don't have it in front of me right now, but there are different parts in your feet. Um, if you've ever had reflexology done, there's different parts in your hands um, mm -hmm. that go with different organs in the body. Um, mm -hmm. So you can look in a reflexology thing and let's say you're, you know, dealing with the heart um, and you want to really, you know, uh, help that so you can take a lavender or whatever oil that you're using and you can rub it into that specific spot on your foot or your hand. Um, so that's like really like super intense, you know, like when you're like really working on something, but just a general, you know, you know, I'm, I'm feeling tired. I'm going to put some lavender on the bottom of my feet. I'm going to use some serenity. Um, you can use a roller bottle and rub it on your feet and rub it in. You can put it on the spine and right at the nape of the neck. Um, okay. And you can even put it at your, you know, on your neck um, okay. and smell it. Smelling okay. it just as amazing as putting it on. So. All right. Awesome. So we talked about uh, pregnancy, 
labor and delivery and the two oils that you use. What about postpartum? Sure. So um, we want to make sure that we are assisted postpartum. That is, uh, people don't talk about postpartum enough, I think, because uh, we we have the baby already and that's the most important part, right? Yeah. <laughs> but um, it's real serious uh, to really make sure that we're taking care of ourselves postpartum. So if you deal with, you know, just sad feelings, um, and that is something that you know, that's something that you deal with a lot. I would go in with wild orange, uh, because wild orange is really a helpful oil for emotions. Um, but I'd like to just interject essential oils, um, can, people can react to them differently, right? Lavender is known to help people to sleep. Some people, it doesn't really help them to sleep because mm-hmm. their body is different. So if you were to ever use an essential oil that um, just didn't work for you, there are so many more. So you can you know, figure out which ones work for you. Um, so I just want to like interject that because my, my, my son, we use lavender and have, go to sleep. And he's like, I'm awake. Um, and so he started using vetiver. That was the one that he needed to use. Um, Mm -hmm. kind of got off on a tangent, but um, no, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. So postpartum. So postpartum is very important, uh, part of, of your journey through pregnancy, labor, and delivery and supporting yourself. Uh, you can use supplements. There's a long life vitality that you can use. That's great for your health, your heart brain and gut. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's really great to really continue to supply you with nutrients. Um, and you can make sure you're drinking lots of water and Mm -hmm. eating lots of good food, whatever that is for you, because everybody's body is different. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not telling anybody to be on any specific diet, but you have to listen to your body and know what's good for you. Um, and yeah, that's, that's the most important is really to just take care of yourself. And you know that when you're postpartum eating, I think it's 300 extra calories, not a thousand <laughs> we need. It's like yeah. 300 to 500 calories extra that we definitely um, need to eat. So dieting after we have the baby is not really an option. Do your best to nurse that baby um, so that um, you can, you know, go back to what you used to be kind of, sort of, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> got you, got you. All right. So in terms of like the essential oils, you're saying that the one that you feel w- that was most helpful for you was the wild orange. Yeah. Wild orange was great. Frankincense was another one. Uh, mm-hmm. I did that a lot after postpartum mm-hmm. just because uh, it's got so many benefits. It's got lots mm-hmm. of emotional benefits. I just got benefits. Um, and uh, physical benefits. Um, it's good for pain. It's good for immune support. It's good for emotions. It's just like, if you need an oil and you're unsure of what oil to use, frankincense is the way to go because it, it really encompasses a lot of issues that you might experience. Okay. And how do you typically use the frankincense the same way again, just applying it now? Is that considered a, considered a hot oil or it is not. It is not okay. a hot. Uh, so I do apply it neat. I do apply it in a roller bottle because um, frankincense is one that I want to stretch because all of us love it so much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so, um, even though a bottle seems little, it's got like 280, 275 drops in it. So if you're only using one drop, it could last you, you know, for quite some time. Um, but I use frankincense under my tongue. And I use it that way when I do feel like emotionally um, overwhelmed, sad. um, And I do that for two or three days. And then usually I forget. And when I forget, it's probably because I don't need it anymore. Okay. So when you say you put it under your tongue, is Mm -hmm. it just like one drop under your tongue? And then how frequently are you doing that throughout the day? Uh, Just one, like in the morning and in the evening. Okay. Or just one. It's really not a constant thing. Yeah. Okay. So 
let me just put this out there um, that, you know, if, if you get an inferior, inferior quality essential oils, do not ingest it because most no. of them will let you know that you're not supposed to. Um, so just be mindful of that as we're having this discussion. Um, so you mentioned with your son sleeping at night and how sometimes you use essential oils. Can you tell me other ways that you use essential oils with your children just on a regular basis? Sure. Um, I use um, essential oils when they have, you know, pain. So if, um, if they've fallen and, um, you know, they have, they bump themselves, we'll use deep blue. So this is the, the, it's a rub that we use. There is an oil, um, but, you, you know, definitely dilute it. Uh, for the children, even the rub, um, I found with my younger ones that just a little bit and then rub in with coconut oil because it's going to feel tingly. Their skin is sensitive and okay. um, definitely have to put coconut oil over it. Okay. Um, so I use that, uh, for them a lot, especially when they're, you know, they're, they're gymnasts. So when they're practicing and doing all of those things, uh, even when we go to the park and they ran way too much, you know, we use deep blue a lot. Um, we so I'm use assuming if, if, if we choose not to get like, you know, the cream and just the oil itself, you can probably mix that in with whatever lotions or things that you have. And it yes. would be as effective. It could be, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, so you could use one drop, one drop of the, the oil with uh -huh. your lotion, but I wouldn't put it in the bottle. Okay. Like the oil, I wouldn't put the oil in the bottle of lotion. Just okay. you would um, just more take whatever is needed out and then mix it in. Correct. Um, and then. Um, Sorry, got sidetracked. What were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> um, what oils do you use with your children? Okay. Uh, so peppermint are supplements. Um, I use, they take these too sometimes. Um, if they have like, if their stomach is upset um, and my daughter, she's a little bit more sensitive to the oils on her skin. So I give her the supplement and she takes it. And the one cool thing about the supplement is that you'll feel it so cool in your tummy. <laughs> um, so yeah, so she uses that when her, if her tummy's upset, uh, we use them when they're not feeling well, when they have elevated temperatures. Uh, I don't, since in the last five years, I have had to purchase over the counter uh, fever reducer one time. Okay. And I don't use it because I know that I've wanted to stay away from them for so long. And I just try my best to use, you know, God's creation to help support our body. So, um, so yeah, we use lavender to help bring down fevers. We use frankincense and peppermint. So, you know, if you're going to use peppermint, you want to definitely dilute so against like getting these toxic filled products to my babies. Um, so yeah, so lavender would be a better choice for children uh, to use to reduce the fever along with frankincense. Uh, we use wild orange a lot as well. Um, and then when we're doing like, we're homeschoolers. So when we're doing study time, uh, we use oils to help them focus. We put them in the diffuser. We sit around. Um, sometimes what I'll do is like, if we had an exceptionally challenging day the day before, I'll start the day like before they even wake up, I'll put whatever essential oils I want to do to support their emotions and their mood um, and to keep it a little light in our home. So I'll put the oils in there before they wake up. In the diffuser. In the diffuser, yeah. And you feel like you definitely can see a difference. Yes, for sure. For sure. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So great information. So now I know that I've read in a few places where, you know, they say that there are certain essential oils that you really should not um, give to children or apply to their body. 
um, and that they're certain ages. Can you speak to that a little bit more? Is that something, you know, that you can expound on? Sure. Um, I know that oregano, um, they can still use it, but it's going to be diluted a whole lot. Um, when you have a, like a 15 milliliter roller bottle uh, for an adult, if I get these m- a little mixed up, so you'll, you want to have 10 to 15 drops of the oil and then you fill the rest with coconut oil. Okay. okay. For a child, depending on how old they are, if they're like an infant, it's like two drops and then fill it up, you know, um, for, you know, an older child, you know, five to eight drops, I think is plenty. Um, and then filling it up. doTERRA actually has an amazing line for children. Okay. They have a children's line and they're all in roller bottles. So they're already pre-diluted. And okay. so you really have to do the work and trying to figure it out when those body, bottles empty, empty up and you have the oil and you're like, I have the frankincense or I have, they're blends. So they're a little, you know, different. So you're not going to get the exact same thing. Um, but you can say I have frankincense and I have wild orange and I have whatever um, okay. to support this and you can make your own, but, um, but yeah, they already have them diluted. So they really, uh, they're really a great line to have too. Okay. So I think it's safe to say that if you're not familiar to not just go and apply just anything to your children, but to just do the research first. um, Yeah, sure. Um, What was, I was going to ask you something. So I just kind of want to transition a little bit because I know that this is something that you wanted to talk about. Like how have you used essential oils for allergies? Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. So um, I personally have not used essential oils for allergies because we don't really have allergies. Although the other day I started feeling scratching in my throat. I started feeling tickling in my nose. And I'm like, is this what allergies feel like? Mm -hmm. You know, so I actually came home and because I have them, because um, I share with other people, I took a couple of these tri-ease and so these, oh, go ahead. Uh Uh-huh. So these are lemon, lavender, and peppermint. That's what they are. So a person um, that, you know, reached out to me, her doctor that had given her so many different meds um, had told her, I think you need to go the natural route. And I was like blown away. I'm like, can I have this doctor's number? (laughs) That's a good doctor. (laughs) Although he might have, he probably should have started with the natural first, but (laughs) But when you, you know, when people realize, when doctors realize that what they're doing is not helpful and they can actually speak to um, natural forms of healthcare, that's amazing to me um, because that's not their first, um, their first go-to. Their first go-to is what they can create in a lab. So she came to me and she's like, my doctor just told me I just needed blah, blah, blah. And so she started using lemon, lavender, and peppermint. And I think it was before we even got the supplements because the supplements are fairly new, I think. Um, And so we were, she was able to assist herself uh, through her allergies quite a bit. And so if you do not have the supplement, you can just, this is if you're using doTERRA essential oils, you can take a lemon, lavender, and peppermint in a little shot glass or just like, you know, two ounces of water, drink it, gargle, and swallow. How many drops though? Um, one to three, depending on the, you know, the age of the person. Okay. Right? So they're very young, just one drop of each. Uh, okay. But the three, honestly, you can, everyone can start with one drop and then you, you work your way up what you need. Because peppermint, you only need one drop of peppermint. You don't need, ever need three drops. Of pretty potent. It was pretty, it's pretty potent for sure. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, one drop of each, put in a little bit of water, gargle, and then swallow. And that is um, one of the protocols to help with, with um, allergies. Another thing is the neti pot. So that could be really helpful as well. Um, so you're taking water that it's filtered, you're boiling it up, and you're putting it, of course, you do not want the water to be too hot. You want it to cool down 
and be somewhat warm, but not cold. Cause you know, when it's too cold, it gets into your hair, but it can help to um, release, relieve you quite, quite a bit. Okay, got you, got you. All right, now what about heartburn? Heartburn <clears throat> is something that a peppermint is really um, one of the go-tos for heartburn. So you can take the supplement, you can take the oil. Um, that is uh, one thing that a lot of women during pregnancy, they struggle with heartburn uh, just because the baby's just kind of like rising up there. And um, they experience that a lot, of, you know, depending on what kinds of foods they're eating. Uh, peppermint oil is an, a great oil to use for heartburn. Okay. And then how would you use that? Just rub uh, it on? You, if you don't want to ingest, you could rub it on, uh, diluting it would be definitely to your benefit. Um, and then if you are fine with ingesting the oil, there's stuff, there's soft gels, um, or you can take the oil in some water and just drink it. Okay. All right. Any, so we're hearing the benefits, any dangers to essential oils using essential oils? Dangers to essential oils are receiving oils or using oils that are toxic. That's one huge danger. Um, using an oil and you're not sure, like if you were to use clary sage when you were three months pregnant, you know, or, you know, and this is a, an oil to help to um, bring on contractions. So you mm -hmm. definitely don't want to, um, use that oil too early in pregnancy. Uh, so those, there are a few oils, um, even with doTERRA that doTERRA does not suggest ingesting. Mm -hmm. Um, like wintergreen is one of them, uh, that you should not ingest, even though they have wintergreen gum. My thing is if it's got, you know, a childproof top, then you probably don't want to ingest it. Um, Siberian fur is one, I believe that, uh, you should not ingest. So a lot of the furs, like Douglas fur, Siberian fur, you know, people kind of shy away from ingesting it. So you're not going to drink. If you do ingest it, you're not even drinking one whole drop. Mm -hmm. What you would do is you would take a toothpick mm -hmm. and put it in whatever it is. So that that is why they're not like, yeah, ingest it because it's a toothpick and they don't want you to just put a whole drop and keep drinking a drop every so often. Mm -hmm. um, I had to share that with a friend of mine. I don't know what kind of oils she's using because I know she didn't get the wintergreen from me, but <laughs> it's mm -hmm. like, you drink wintergreen? That's one of the ones to stay away from, even if it's doTERRA. So there are still a few oils that you should not just take a whole drop of. Um, and you just you know, you do, you do your due diligence, especially when you're unfamiliar with an oil. And with doTERRA, it's very easy because the ones that you can ingest, it'll say essential oil supplement. Mm -hmm. And the ones that you should not ingest, it'll just say essential oil. Mm -hmm. and it'll say, um, and it'll tell you whether you should ingest it or not, whether you can ingest it or not. So it's, it's very, very simple if you purchase these oils. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So <clears throat> now people may listen to this and go, they, this is like one big commercial for doTERRA. And if you're thinking that you're right, because <laughs> I mean, if you've tried a product and you know that it works, why not? Right. Share it with others. So with that said, and, and I could just really testify to this fact because I think peppermint was one of the first ones that I used because I used to use the health food store brand. And, you know, when you were telling me about it, I'm like, I, you know, they say it's all natural. What's the big deal? And I remember when I tried, the first one that I tried was um, peppermint. And I was like, whoa, it was such a difference. Like you could tell in terms of the potency and just, you know, feeling tingly and not necessarily in a bad way. And that for me was like such an eye opener, like, okay, yes, there's definitely um, a difference. Now, before we close out, I, I do want you to kind of, you know, give us some information and I'll leave your information, of course, in the description box as well. But maybe we should have discussed this earlier on. 
can you talk about those um, oils that we go to in the health food stores and they have on it 100% natural essential oils and people assume the label says 100% natural, so therefore it's 100% natural. Can you speak to that and even some of the regulations because you were the ones who, one who kind of opened my eyes to understand some of the deception that's going on there with the labeling? Absolutely. It is really unfortunate. Um, as you were saying that, one of the things that I remember being taught in school, which was very few things, <laughs> one of the things I remember being taught. <laughs> That's not a discussion. <laughs> was buyer beware. Mm -hmm. Buyer, the buyer has to beware. Mm -hmm. The person presenting, they can say a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And it's just like when someone, something says organic and you and you just grab it and go, mm -hmm. it's not 100% organic necessarily. If mm -hmm. you look on the back of the, of the, um, of the label and you look at the ingredients, some of the ingredients are not organic. It has to be like, I think 80% or 70%. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what the percentage is, mm -hmm. but it does not have to be 100% organic for them to be able to stick organic on that label. Mm -hmm. And so with essential oils, essential oils are not regulated. Okay. So anybody can be doing anything with essential oils because it's a not, it's not regulated. Um, now that's a whole nother story because I don't even think things that are regulated by the FDA are necessarily safe, but, <laughs> but essential oils, um, in order for you to say 100% natural or 100% essential oil, only 10% of that bottle has to be 100% essential oil. And then the rest of the bottle can be filled in with water and other derivatives and other fillers and other oils. You know, they can take um, coconut oil and jojoba oil and whatever oil they choose to use. And then they can put little scents to make it smell real potent. That's what they do with essential oil. That's why you can't ingest them. And that's why um, when doTERRA has a product, doTERRA stands by, by the product. And I mean, this, is, this speaks very, a high volume. I was given, I purchased a, a package of the greens. I don't know if you've tried the doTERRA greens yet. They're no. amazing. Um, I, try, I purchased a a package of the greens and I was called by doTERRA last week. Mm -hmm. I was like, doTERRA's calling me? Oh snap, you know? <laughs> and they told me that the pack the the package that I had purchased, there it was inferior and they they're sending me a new one in the mail. Mm -hmm. And and I was like, he, they're like that batch was inferior. They're sent throw it away. And I was like, wait a minute. I just want to know. Is it dangerous? Like is it going to affect me? Like mm -hmm. how inferior is it? They're like, mm -hmm. it's not going to affect you. It's not going to hurt you. You don't need to go to the doctor or anything like that, but it just didn't meet our standards. Their standard is 100% pure. And when they find out in the pack package or in a, in a batch that it is not 100% pure, they're calling you. And I think that spoke so much volume to me and made me feel so confident because um, it's like when people do a recall. Uh, first of all, the company that I purchased whatever from, they don't know that I purchased it. They don't have my phone number and they're not, they can't call me. They just put it on the news and guess what? I don't watch it. So I'm not mm -hmm. going to know <laughs> about the recall on chicken or whatever. <laughs> mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I love that. Awesome. Awesome. Now, as you're talking, and I know we were trying to close it out, it made me think of one more question for you. Is there a shelf life to these things? Do, do, can the essential oils go rancid? Um, so there is. Uh, on the bottom of the package, it'll tell you um, when it expires. I'm looking at this one. This one expires in 2025. So they have a very long shelf life. Um, wow. If you're using your essential oils, if you purchase essential oils, there's no reason why you shouldn't be using your essential oils, even if you're just using it to make your house smell good right? Mm -hmm. Because there's going to be so many benefits to that. I'm kind of going off on tangent, but there is a shelf life. It's on the bottom of the bottle mm -hmm. and, um, and it's a long shelf life. 
Okay. So that used to just look at the bottom of the um, bottle. Um, all right. So we discussed quite a few essential oils, but there were a few that I heard that kept on coming up. So if I'm new and, you know, I'm just like, hey, this stuff is expensive if I'm trying to go like the real route and get the real deal stuff and I can't buy every single one, what would you say are the three top ones if I'm just starting off and I can't afford every single one? Which three top ones would you recommend? Okay, well, I want to start off first that it depends on the person, right? Okay. If you're fairly healthy, um, and, and the number two is we pay for what we value, right? So some people will pay $100 for essential oils. Some people will pay $100 for a purse. Uh, we all spent $100, but one person valued the purse more and can't spend $100 on essential oils. And one person valued their health more and would never buy a $100 purse. Just, I like to start with that. <laughs> and so if you're fairly healthy and you um, are just wanting to get in the game, um, I would say lemon, lavender, and peppermint are amazing oils to start with. Um, if you have that $100 to spend, uh, purchasing a smaller kit, because those have a variety, like you have like the top 10 oils in them. And so you're going to be able to um, get, use products that are going to help you in every area, emotional and physical issues that you're experiencing. Um, and then frankincense, like I'm going to have to add that frankincense in there because mm -hmm. that oil, that is the king oil. That's the Jesus oil. That's everything. Um, I think frankincense is, uh, is an oil that if you can add, cause there's a little lemon, lavender and peppermint kit. If you can add it to that kit, um, you might as well probably get a kit, but it would definitely be one of the oils to, to have on hand. Okay. And you don't have to buy them all in one month. You can spread it out, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You can buy one or two oils, three oils, a kit. <laughs> <laughs> Got you. Got you. All right. So, Miriam, can you tell us, like, for those uh, that want to know more, I know you do have an Instagram page. and. Mm -hmm. What other means do you have that they can get in touch with you if they're interested in purchasing? Because with doTERRA, don't you have to go through a rep or how you does do. that work? Okay. Yeah, you do. So you can find me on Instagram at it. I'm at Oily Remedy. Um, also on YouTube, I have a really small channel, channel that is Oily Remedy as well. Um, and... Uh, health at oilyremedy.com. That's my email. So you can send me an email if you want to get started. Okay. Um, I give uh, free consultations so that we can really get you started um, in the best for you and your family. So we're not going to, you know, pile on a bunch of stuff. We're going to figure out what you need and then get gear, gear into that. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So I don't know if there's anything else that you wanted to add. Um, no, I, I think it is, thank you, first of all, for allowing me to come on your channel and chat with you. I just, um, I always love chatting with you and I always feel like I'm going off on a tangent. <laughs> we both do, that's okay. <laughs> so, but thank you for allowing me to um, share this space with you. Um, but I don't have, I personally just really encourage all people out there, um, no matter what phase of life that you're in, to really um, question all the things uh, because doctors are a very important piece. Um, I do not um, discredit them, but they're also learning too throughout their journey. And some doctors come to know different things throughout their journey. So they don't know all of it and they can never know all of it. And um, we need to learn how to listen to our bodies and be our best advocate so that we can be successful in our health journey. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Miriam. I really appreciate you being here. And I just pray that the information that was shared, that it would be helpful to those that listened. All right. Thanks again. 
Thank you. Hello. So welcome to um, this interview.